Got it. Um, a lot of people will want to talk about income tax cuts, LLCs, but the reoccurring theme is just education, especially in this area. Um, and, and we hear it over and over and over. And what do you tell them? Until we fix the budget, we can't fix a whole lot else. You know, and I, I won't go into where I was at, but I was at a door and I had a lady ask me to come in. Um, and I, I just told her, I said, I need to keep going. If I can be elected, I need to get to your next door neighbor. But she said, I, I really want to talk to you. And I finally said, okay. And, and her husband was there and um, he works for a school district. She has a catastrophic illness and they were worried about keeping their health care. That's wrong. That's wrong. Th these people need to be treated with respect and we need to take care of people like this. Have you seriously been concerned of, about whether or not the schools would actually open after July 1st? You know, tongue in cheek, yes. I, at, at our lunches and stuff in my, at the school, we're like, oh, maybe we won't have to go back August 5th. We go back the 5th, the kids come back the 11th. But there are several in my department that are like, we're not opening. You guys, we are not opening. And I'm like, oh, come on. But there are some that really feel that we may be stymied to the point where we won't open. So, so it makes us all more concerned. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an eternal optimist, so I assume it will open. And I don't think the people of Kansas would let us not open. All right, the schools are, that, that's what's important to them. Fix the formula. Uh, make decisions, um, you know, come to some sort of consensus on what, what's a priority for the state and get it fixed. Um, we can't continue to move into the future with that many unknowns about how we're going to fund basic necessities for the state. I mean, if we continue to rob Peter to pay Paul, it's eventually, you know, there's no more Peter left to rob. We have some of the best school districts in the country. We do, for a fact. Um, and I want to see that throughout, this, throughout the state of Kansas. I mean, every school district should have similar funding, should have similar amenities, should, you know, every kid should have the, the same opportunities, whether they're in Garden City, Kansas, or Overland Park, Kansas. Um, but again, it's, we also need to be willing to pay the taxes to fund that, whether you live in Garden City, Kansas, or Overland Park, Kansas. And I don't think the legislature gets to thumb its nose at the court and its first principles. It's Marbury versus Madison. It's the Supreme Court, whether it's the state Supreme Court or the federal Supreme Court, has the obligation and duty to say what the law is. And if the legislature doesn't like that, they go back and they, they, try, to fit, they try it again. They fix it. They don't say, shut it down. As I've understood Leader Abrams to have said, if they want to shut it down, let them shut it down. I mean, I have a daughter with Down syndrome. We are absolutely dependent on the schools to provide her with physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. And telling me that you have a, you're, you're not going to call a session or treat it like it's not the most important thing, because it is the most important thing right now, because my daughter depends on it. So it's the, way, it's the most important thing to me and a lot of other folks. I am a Republican through and through, but I do not appreciate, I do not appreciate, I do not appreciate the governor, my party's leader, going to war with the Supreme Court and wanting to say, let's throw these judges. No, that's not the position of the, the governor. If you don't like what they do, work hard, strive mightily to come up with legislation that satisfies the court. But you don't get to say, and you just want to thumb your nose at the Kansas Supreme Court. But we've heard from people right around you, who live around you, say, you know, my schools are fine, so I'm not really too worried. Yeah, well, that's interesting. That's, that's the Johnson County perspective. But I grew up in Montgomery County. I grew up with Independence. And, you know, the legislature isn't the legislature of Johnson County or Sedgwick County or Shawnee County. It's Montgomery and, and Osage and Finney, where there are people who deserve a good education, but there's not a tax base to draw from. No sense in walking on Oakland. Two main issues on the door. One is probably the um, quote unquote LLC tax loophole. Um, people talk about that. Some people are in favor for it. I mean, it, uh, you know, they'll say it helped them and helped their business. Other people don't think it's a fair way of doing things. Um, it, it was never intended to be 100% of the income from a business to not be taxed. 
Um, and so that's why I worked with some other senators to try to close that loophole this last session. We weren't successful, um, but it's obviously a structural problem that we have that needs to be fixed. And then the second thing I hear um, is, okay, we understand the need to lower taxes. We understand how that helps the everyday taxpayer, the everyday voter, um, but where are the corresponding budget reductions that need to go along with that? And if you look at the budgets that we've gotten from the governor, they don't have those cuts. Uh, and so that's that drives the uh, revenue issue, for lack of a better term, uh, as just as much as anybody saying that the LLC loophole does. Um, there are certain things in state government that we maybe don't even need to do, or we have three or four agencies replicating the process. So there's a lot of redundancy there that is all taxpayer money that's being spent. Like I said, I think if you cut spending first, kind of see how things shake out, and then see where taxes can be reduced after that, to me, that's the way to do it. It was just, just backwards. So will you stop? Okay. There are so many stories of people who just said, I'm not being represented. I send email after email, phone call after phone call, and I'm not responded to. I want a voice in Topeka. Yeah, and your voice, and so what are you hearing again for the, at the door? <laughs> like, yeah, what, what sort of people, what are they saying? People are concerned with schools, concerned with the LLC loophole, um, concerned with their retirement if they have capers, um, the future of our state. My understanding is, is that there's not going to be enough money to even start a school here. Because, you know, I mean, uh, any kind of municipality, whether it be a, a town, a city, a, a county, a state, a country, is defined by the quality of the education that it gets. You know, and that's, that's where it all starts.